Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for all you do for us, thanking you, Lord, for another day, thanking you for another week, supplying our needs. We ask you, Lord, to touch each person that's here, bless each one, put your hand on each one, Lord, supply their needs. Help us, Lord, to go into the service praising your name. Help us to come out, Lord, learning something from your word. Help us this week, Lord, that uh, our needs will be met, that souls will be saved, lives will be changed. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Take a hymn book and turn to page 475. We're not going to do a lot of singing today. My voice is a little hoarse. We're going to do a couple of verses of three songs. <clears throat> Star. 
than the brightest stars. It's sweeter than the song they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim what a lovely day. Let's take that course one more time. What a lovely name, the name of Jesus, reaching higher far than the brightest star. It's sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim. Name. And just like the Cortez do, let the world proclaim. Now the last part of it says, what a lovely name. Come on guys, I'm watching you all. What a lovely name. Amen. See, you can do it. You may be seated. You can do it. Amen. You know, it's, uh, it's good to be able to have a little fun in church. We do that once in a while. I do it a lot because I forget my words sometimes. That's my dementia setting it. Actually, what it is is uh, getting older and it's harder to memorize as you get older. I don't know about you guys, but it is for me. And then we only have about 75 or 80 songs that we do. And in my brain, <coughs> people don't have that stretch anymore like that. But anyway, who's got a testimony for God? God's done something good for you this week. Come on, somebody who? Mary. Um, I want to praise God uh, for giving us another week for His blessed mighty hands being upon us, keeping us safe. And I want to praise God because they gave him all little raise this week. And they told him yesterday that they're going to give him another one. So I want to praise God for that. See, what, that's what happens when you're married to a good worker. <laughs> you know? And, you got, and he's got a good boss, see? That's good. Who else got a testimony for God? God's done something good for you this week. Yes, back here. Um, well, actually, yeah, since last week, um, I became a staff member here, and I'd just like to thank thank God for that and just ask that he give me the strength and, uh, and the courage to uh, to do what I need to do and, and uh, so that I can be a part of uh, the change that... Uh, and, and that amen. There's another hand up. Uh, yeah. Oh, I want to praise the Lord for um, getting my medical issues starting to get worked out. I try to find me a medical uh, private care doctor and getting me the specialist I need to see. So All right. I'm sure he's working on it. So. Good. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, back here. Yeah, I'd like to praise the Lord for bringing my stepdad through a major heart attack last Monday. Right. And he's doing fine. He's out of the hospital and home. Good, good. Amen. Did you have your hand up to her or are you just helping her put hers up? Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. I got a prayer request, you know, thank I went to the hospital the first part of this month and everything and my stomach's been bothering me this last week. But I started passing blood again last night and I'm kinda of worried about it. Okay. All right. We'll that, we'll do that in a minute. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah. Pastor, one more thing. I'd like to praise God for his healing power that that he touches us and he heals us and I wanna thank him for that. Lexi's doing really good and my sister's doing good and she said to thank you for all your prayers. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah, I like uh, just how he makes things work out. Uh, mm -hmm. Start to worry about things and mm -hmm. yeah, turn out just not worrying, worrying about something that didn't really matter in the end at all. I mean, it just, just how he makes things come together. Amen. 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 Send another hand back. Um, yeah, it was in the same, you know, like that, uh, you know, God giving me comfort, you know, I'm not from here and I uh, wasn't sure um, about staying here in Colorado, but uh, he's given me comfort and me relax. Amen. 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 Anybody else got here? Yeah, I'd like to say uh, I'm just um, <coughs> so grateful for uh, getting a psych psychic chest I left from a car accident in 2015. I thank the Lord for it and thank him for your day. Uh, think about it. And um, yeah. also, thanks for uh, Keith for giving me another chance to come back over here. Amen. Trying, trying to figure out what I want to do. Is so, so many things that I want to do to get myself 
back up where I want to be, you know. So I struggle with a little bit right now. So I know the Lord is there to, to help me. All I got to do is just pray for it. And that's how it is. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah. This week I started on my medicine again. So All right. I pray for, pray for the power this week that I can take those. Yeah. yeah, you need to do that if you're supposed to. Anybody else? You want to leave anybody out? Barbara? No? <laughs> I don't know if I can handle that. I don't want to hog the floor anymore. I don't know about that. I enjoy hearing everybody. I don't, I don't know if I can handle that. Okay. All right. Let's get, you know, anybody else have a prayer request? We want to remember John. He's going in here sometime here in the future for triple bypass surgery. Uh, Mary? I want to continue praying for all of my children. <coughs> Uh, for Dion, uh, I don't know what's going on with him, but lately he's talking to himself, and I just pray that God gets a hold of him and uh, touches him. Amen. I have to pray for Larry. Yeah. Uh, his shot wore off a couple months before it was supposed to, so I think it's getting close to needing surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, you should <coughs> just get a bad need to pray for him. Yeah. Um, uh, for everyone, you know, pray for uh, all the people that's not able to uh, come inside during this winter time. You know, and I hope they stay safe out there with God's uh, help. And uh, because it's, it's hard. Anybody else? Uh, I have a request for Russell. Um, and it's also for me. Um, I've been having some we just have too much going on here for him to not be here. So. We're praying for him to come home, but also for someone asked for, I think it was Gary asking what to, knowing what to do, that we pray for clarity and wisdom over our lives, because sometimes we forget to ask for that insight the Lord has, and he can see everything we need. So just Amen. pray pray for Russell. Amen. Okay, anybody else? We, was there another prayer request? Yeah. Yes, uh, I, I want to thank God for the new work. I'm ready to give uh, everybody else here that wants to find work, you know, the door to open for them so they can find that. Amen. I can't hear for people finding work. 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 Basically. Okay. Pastor yeah. Wigmore, I would like to pray for my mom as well because my mom has a very hard heart, and I just pray that, that God will touch her heart, and that God will give her some understanding and wisdom. <coughs> God heard all the prayer requests. Yes. Yeah, I want to pray for my wife. And she makes it to the to the operation to get her gallbladder removed. And she's going to have an operation here pretty soon. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody else? No? All right. Let's go to prayer. Father, we come before your day. We thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. We can't thank you enough for the many blessings that you bestow upon us, Lord, and for the answers to prayer that we seek. And Lord, we thank you that. You have everything in your control. But Lord, we there's things that we need to do. And Lord, we need to sometimes just take a look at our life and see where it's headed. And see, Lord, what, what's behind us. And if it's not too good, what's behind us. And we need to think about changing. And we need to think about getting our hearts right with you and doing the things that's necessary to live a pleasing life with you. To live a life, Lord, where heaven is your eternal home. And Lord, it really don't matter what we live in in this earth. But, Lord, we want to make heaven our home. And, Lord, for the many prayer requests today, you heard them all. I can't remember them all, but, Lord, you, you heard them all. Pray for the one, Lord, that's uh, having trouble with his stomach. We pray, Lord, to touch him. Lord, you just put your healing hand upon him. Lord, for Mary's family, Lord, we pray that you touch them. And, Lord, you know the ones that need help from you. You know the ones that need to be saved. You know the ones that need a healing. You know the ones, Lord, that need to be delivered. And, Lord, we pray that you just touch her family and help her in a motto to be witnesses and examples to their family and to the people around them. Lord, that's uh, basically what we need to be as examples to the people around us. And Lord, we pray for the one back here, Lord, that uh, his, his wife is going in for an operation. Pray, Lord, you touch her, lift her up, and Lord, do a complete healing in her body. Lord, you say that if we call on your name, you are here us and you'll answer prayer. And so, Lord, we're calling on your name this morning, asking you to do what you say you'll do. And we're trusting you for it, and we're thanking you for it ahead of time. For the other prayer requests, Lord, for the ones on the street, Lord, that, that need you and need shelter, we pray, Lord, that you'll open up the uh, areas that, in their heart and in the area of, the, of our town that will find some low-income housing and stuff for people, Lord, that can afford it. We just uh, 
there's a need out there. All we can do is do what we can do and then pray for the others. So, Lord, we just do that and lift them up in prayer. And, Lord, for anybody other prayer request that was here that I might have missed, we pray. Oh, for Larry, Lord, we pray that you touch him. Put your healing hand upon his back, Lord, and do a complete healing that only you can do. Even before the doctors take a look. And we thank you for what you're going to do. Now, Lord, we ask you to be with us this morning. Guide us in all that we do. We ask this in your name. Amen. We want to take up our morning offering at this time. Amado and guys, you want to come up and take up the offering at this time. Father, we come before you thanking you for all you do for us. Now, Lord, it's our turn to give back to you. We ask you, Lord, to be with the, the gift and the giver. Touch each one, Lord, and lift them up. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Take your hymn books real quick. Turn to page 304. 304. It's just a little chorus. But we'll do this instead of our last song. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. sometimes, you know. This morning, Vern's here. He does a lot of work on our trucks, I'll tell you. See? And, and I, Jay, I should know your name by now. I say, hey, you. But, you know, but in James, they're, they're here this morning. You know, I tell you how God works. Now, I went over to your place yesterday, and I, I said I needed a bookkeeper, right? And you said, I know. Why don't you just quit over there? And I called her. She's coming down tomorrow morning. And, and uh, uh, that's how God works. He, you know, he knows what you need. We used to do a song years ago. I haven't done it for many years. I wouldn't even try to do it today. But it's, he knows what I need before I pray. And he does. He knows what you need before you pray. And But we have to still lift up our voice to God. We still have to lift up our inner being. You know, first of all, we have to recognize the fact that we're sinners. And we need the grace of God. We need the salvation of Jesus Christ to change us and to set us free from sin. Now... Sin, that big three-letter word, sin. There's another word for it. What is it? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Absolutely. Lawlessness. Lawlessness is sin. And sin is lawlessness. So if you break man's law, you go to jail, you go to prison, you pay fines. And I wouldn't even ask this morning how many fines anybody in here has paid. But I'll tell you this. A couple of three years ago, 38 people, 39 people, I had them write down just the money they paid. Not what they owe, but the money they paid. And out of 39 people, $118,000. Now you take that times 450 to 500 rescue missions across the United States, Salvation Armies, all the other shelters, 
And if you added that all up, it would be in the high millions. Three and a half million. All, all wasted money. All wasted money. Because of sin in your life. Now, one thing, yeah, I don't preach on tithe very often. I just don't do it. I talk about it a little bit. I don't think I've preached a message on it in several years. But you say, well, why would you preach a message to me? Because I don't have any money. Well, maybe there's a reason you don't have any money. You see, the Bible says 10% of what we make belongs to God. 10%. Now, for those of you who have a hard time with math, 10% of a dollar is what? 10 cents. What's 10% of $10? dollars a dollar. What's 10% of a hundred dollars? Ten dollars. Okay. What's 10% of a thousand? A hundred dollars. Hey, you're pretty good. All right. Pretty good. Now, that's what belongs to God. That's what we owe God. The offerings is what we give over and above that. The offerings is what we give over and above that. So on the 11th of February, we're going to be singing over at Emmanuel Baptist Church. They'll take up their church offering. And then when we get done singing, they're going to take up an offering for the mission. And, and, uh, that's an offering above what their tithes, and offer, or tithes are. So that's what God commands us to do. Now, if we don't do that, we're breaking his law. If we don't do that, how can, you, how can you be blessed of God if you don't do what God tells you to do? You see? And for people that have never paid their tithe, let me tell you, you do it first. And it's amazing how much money you have left over at the end of the month. It's amazing. I'm telling you, it's amazing. But you got to trust God enough to do it. You got to do it with an open heart. You got to do it the way God wants you to do it. It's as simple as that. Now that's just a simple part. Of it. And in the church, in the church, 85 85 percent of the people in the church don't pay their tithes. So 85 percent of the people are robbing God. Now, if you're robbing God, are you saved? No. no. So 85% of the people in church are going there because their grandfather and grandmother, or mother and dad, go there. Or it's exciting, or they got good music, or whatever, and they go there for that. They don't go to worship God. They go because of the things that are in the church. I prefer to have people come to worship God. Now, I know that some of you don't come to worship God because you're here because that's part of our program and you have to be here. But that's okay. Because it's worse outside. It's worse outside. So, you're here, it's warm, you get to hear me preach. And what a blessing is that? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It's a blessing, it is. My wife said amen, that's good. Yeah. You know, I don't care if you guys say it or not. It don't, it don't matter to me if you guys say it or not. Huh? Yeah, right, right. But anyway. And then, yeah, you just get out of that one, John. Hey, Keith, one question. Uh, you guys said you're playing at the church next week sometime? No, on the 11th. Oh, can we go there? Yeah, you can. I mean, if we, here, right? All we got to do is figure out how to get you over there. But we can get the band. You just. You ever see anybody hit anybody in church? He's getting close. I'll ride my bike out there. That's okay. Yeah, well, yeah, anybody that wants to go over there. And, and they're having a dinner afterwards, too. Matter of fact, they called me yesterday asked me how many would be coming. I said, I don't know. I said, I have no idea. But they're having a dinner. It's on D Road between 31 and 32 Road. And we're going to be singing at 10 o'clock. Um, but, yeah, they're having a lunch, dinner afterwards. And um, good big church. Probably be about 200, 225 people there. It's going to be kind of fun. But anyway, so we have to do what God commands us to do. And I like preaching on this. I do it quite often. But I think it's a good time to do it again. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn, turn to 1 John chapter 3. I'm going to have you so you memorize this by the time you're done. And you should anyway. Some of it anyway. 1 John chapter 3. That's, well, I don't know what page it's on. I've got a uh, King James. Uh, on those that swore the back of the Bible, it's uh, Revelation and back up about three or four chapters, or three or four books. Right after Peter. 1 John chapter 3. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Now, 
We are separated from the world, although we live in the world. We're not any different than anybody else. It's just that for those that have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, you know what it's like to be free from sin. Now, does that mean you're never going to sin? No, but what that means is that when you do, you immediately recognize the fact that you're wrong, and you ask God to forgive you. And it's forgiven. You don't have to worry about it. When it becomes a problem is when, it, when you do it over and over and over and over again. That's when it becomes a problem. So, we have to recognize the fact that Christ saves us from sin, and the world don't understand it because they don't know what it's like to be saved. It's as simple as that. So, that's the meaning, that's the meaning right there. Now, in verse 2. Beloved, we have, now we are children of God. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself, just as He is pure. Now, verse 4. And everybody here can relate to verse 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Now understand <clears throat> these men. These men were no different than you and I. Except they were fishermen. A lot of them. Tax collectors. A physician. The voice of God... Jesus, when he was walking on the Sea of Galilee, he was walking, and they were bending their nets. They were cleaning their boats, fishing up. I mean, cleaning their netting and so on. And he walked by, and the breezes were blowing. And he walked by, and he said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, they left everything. They left their job. They left everything. And they followed Jesus. And they followed him right straight through as he called them he called his disciples and he gave them a little power to do what needed to be done as far as praying for people as far as praying for the sick they were able to heal some they were they weren't able to heal some they weren't able to cast out demons until afterwards but they, but God gave them power to do this stuff but they hadn't been bought by the blood of Jesus yet they had not been saved they couldn't be saved because Jesus hadn't shed his blood on Calvary. So the difference between these men was this. Before Calvary, they looked at Jesus as a general to take them out of bondage from the Roman Empire. Now, the Romans, were they were strong. They conquered the world almost at that time. And they were violent people. As you can see by reading in the Bible, they were violent people. They crucified Christ. One of the worst deaths you could ever have. Crucified him. And when they crucified Christ, all these men who said, I'll follow you forever, turned away and ran away. They ran away. That showed the humanity of mankind. That it takes something different than just our humanity to follow Christ. So after Calvary, Jesus died on the cross. So after Calvary, Something transpired. Judas had died, and he betrayed Christ for 30 pieces of silver. And you know what? I don't know about you, but I have, I'm 70, I'm going to be 76 next month. I've never heard a person by the name of Judas. Why not? Because that name has shame connected to it. That name has shame because. He sold Jesus for out for 30 pieces of silver. And after Calvary, in the upper room, they were all meeting in the upper room. And something transpired. Now, this is my opinion. And when I say it's my opinion, I'll put it out there. When we get to heaven, I'll ask the Lord. I think I'm going to be right. But in the upper room, something transpired. It said the Holy Spirit came through. And everybody outside, the Medes, the Persians, Iranian, or well, they, they were Persians, but uh, all of them heard the, the gospel message in their own language. In other words, it was translated by the Holy Spirit so that everybody could hear it in their own language. And something transpired in that upper room. 
I think two things took place. I think number one, they recognized Jesus as Savior and they accepted Him as Savior and their sins were forgiven and the Holy Spirit came through and anointed them and anointed them to preach the gospel and from that day on they went out and preached the gospel and every one of them except St. John died a martyr's death for Jesus. Before Calvary they wouldn't stand for it. After Calvary they all died for it. That took a transformation in the heart of man. That took a transformation. It takes a transformation in your heart and in my heart to, today to set us on a path that God has prepared for us. <coughs> See, we don't know. We don't know. You know, I, I, Mary and the Mount of God, how long you been coming here, Mary? Going on 11 years. 11 years. That's a path. 11 years. I, from when I met him 11 years ago to where... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, where, to where they are today. That's an 11-year path that has been different. Huh? Yeah. And from where you were then to where you are today, big change, huh? We have grown a lot. A lot, lot. yeah. Praise God. And see, but we're all on a path. Now, when you're born into sin, and we're all born into sin, that's why the Bible says, anybody that says they're not a sinner, don't, don't listen to them. Because we're all born into sin. That's why Jesus came to take us out. That's why he came. He loved us enough. Now that's kind of hard to understand. I love my wife. And I love my grandkids. And I love my kids. And I don't like some of the things they do sometimes, but I like them. I mean, I love them. But that's a different kind of love. Jesus looked down and he said, even this guy. I love him. And I died just for him. Amen. Just for him. And I looked at him and I said, to my dad, would I do that for him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I do a lot for him, but I don't know if I'd do that for him. I don't know. Pastor, yeah, spiritually, we were this high. But he but he looked at us and he said, down to the he saw us. Can you imagine God looking out over the universe and seeing you? And he says, I'm going to send my son to die for you so that you can have salvation, have it freely, and have your life changed from a life full of sin to a life that is made holy with God's grace and his salvation that changes you. And that's a neat thing. When that changes you, you are different. You're, you're, you're still the same person, but you're different inside. You know? There's an old song, years ago, I don't even know it. But I've been changed, I've been newborn, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, and it, it goes something like that. But you know, I've been changed, I've been newborn. Well, when you're changed, when you're saved, you're newborn. The Bible says everything becomes new, instantly. You become a brand new creature, instantly. And that's what God does when He gets into our life. Now, verse 6. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Now, what this means here, it don't mean that, I don't believe it means that you're not ever going to sin. What it means is, who's our advocate with the Father? Jesus. Jesus is our advocate with the Father because Jesus is the only one that can forgive sins. I've never seen anybody go into a Chinese restaurant, walk up to Buddha, and that, you know, that statue of Buddha, and say, Buddha, forgive my sin. I've never seen that. I hope I never do. I've never seen him go to Confucius and say that. I've never seen him go to all these other Krishnas and all this kind of stuff. No, because there's only one that forgives sin, and that's Jesus. So we come to him and we say, Lord, forgive us, and he forgives us. Now, we're forgiven. But let's say we make a mistake, and we, re we recognize that we make a mistake. We say, Lord, forgive me. And I'm not going to do that again. And you know what? Everybody in this building has the ability to say that. Lord, forgive me. And I won't do that again. And not do it. We all have the ability to do that. Now, when you ask for forgiveness, it's taken care of. You don't have to worry about it. When it becomes sin again, it's when you do it over and over. And then you've got to come back and say, Lord, you better do another work of my life. You better do, do another work of my life. Verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. 
He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. Now, that's not me. That's not, that's not me saying this. This is the word of God. Understand this. For those of you who are here that don't know Jesus as your Savior, right there is who you're serving. Why would you give him credit? Why would you give Satan credit for your life? He who sins is of the devil. Now, that would be enough to change a lot of people's hearts if they heard the gospel for the first time. But people that hear the gospel a lot, they get hardened to the word. They kind of fluff it off. They, they don't pay too much attention to it. But for those that do, for those that do, their life is changed. Their life is different. Their home life, if you have a home life, now most of the guys that come in here don't, but if you have a home life, your home life is different. If you have kids, and you, even though you can't be around them, you can pray for them. You can lift them up. You can say, Lord, keep them in the hollow of your hand. And knowing as a Christian that your prayer is through to heaven. The first prayer that God hears from a sinner, the first prayer that he hears from a sinner. What is it? Father, forgive me for I've sinned. That's the first prayer God hears from a sinner. Father, forgive me for I've sinned. Now, then Jesus comes into your heart, changes you, washes you, cleans you up, gives you a new beginning, and it's amazing the difference. I've seen men faces hardened with sin. I've seen them kneel in an altar of prayer, say, God, forgive me. And the light of the gospel comes out in their heart. Their face changes. They got a happy <coughs> happy face, happy countenance. Why? Because their sins are gone. They're gone. What changes us? The love of God. That's what changes us. God loving us enough to die on a cross for you and for me. That's as simple as that. We don't have to preach a complicated gospel. I don't have to use words that are 23, 24 foot long. I couldn't pronounce them anyway. But we don't have to do that. What we have to do is take a look at the word, the way God put it out here. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Okay. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. Cannot sin. So if God is living in us, we can't sin. Now, when we sin, it's because we take our mind off of God and we do something contrary to what God wants us to do. That means that we have to be in tune with Him all the time. We have to, we have to be in tune with Him all the time. Communicate. You know, one of the worst things today with families is miscommunication. It is. It is. It's one of the worst things. <coughs> miscommunication. That's why a lot of, there's so many divorces today. Nobody talks to one another. Nobody's, they don't have anything to say. And then they get mad at one another, you end up in fights, end up tearing their family apart. And that's not worth it. It's just not worth it. But, if you do things right, God does the mending. He mends the broken hearted. He takes the broken family, he puts it together. He takes the things that need to be done. And he changes them. You see, when Madeline Murray O'Hare had prayer taken out of the school back in the 60s, there had never been a school shooting, never been a school knifing, Never up until that time. When she got prayer taken out of the schools, three years later, the first school shooting took place, and look at what's happened since. Look at what's happened since. I haven't heard anybody at all, anybody, say it started back then. But that's when it started. Because the church didn't stand up. The church was afraid. The church has got a lot of things to answer for. They're not perfect because they're made up of people. The church is made up of people. But the church is only as strong as its weakest member. The church is only as strong as its weakest member. So what do we do? We, do we cast out the weak? No. We build them up. We pray for them. We build them up. Help them to become stronger. And hope that they're stronger, get stronger yet. That's the, way to, that's the way we need to do. Okay? Now, verse 10. 
In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Now, listen to this. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Now, this is, this is the word. Nor is he who does not love his brother. So, you got to love one another. You got to care for one another. You got to care what happens to one another. See, we we say we love, we say that we reach out, but I've seen Christian people that would not put their arm around the person on the street. For whatever fear it is, whatever fear it is, but yet they say they love God. But yet the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I don't like what some of the people that come in here do and have done. I don't like it. And if I looked at it from strictly a, this side, I would look at it very harshly. Very harshly. But I have to also remember they haven't done anything to me, personally. So I can preach the gospel. I can reach out with the love of Christ. And present that love in a way that you can understand it. What you do with it is your business. You know, it's like the computer. You hit the delete button, it goes, but there's always something left in it. You know, that's, isn't it, isn't it amazing? What was it, 35,000 emails um, they found here just a little bit ago? And they disappear, and then all of a sudden the inspector general, with forensic whatever they do, found them. 30, 30 or 35,000 emails between that FBI agent and the, his girlfriend. See, there's always something left. Well, guess what? There's always something left with you. So the Bible talks about two things. Being clean and then being cleansed. Now, clean means being saved. When the Bible says, come unto me, all you that labor and every day, now give your rest. That means pray, ask God to forgive you. Take on Christ as your Savior. Change the way you live. Change the way you talk. Change the way, if you swear, don't swear no more. If you drink, don't drink no more. If you smoke, lay the cigarettes down. Now, if you want to, for those of you who smoke, I challenge you. I don't think anybody will do it without challenging. Now, I should have faith, shouldn't I? Probably ought to have faith on that, huh? Mm -hmm. But anyway, you take, when you think about that next pack of cigarettes, take that money, put it in your pocket, don't buy the cigarettes, and next Sunday, give it to God. Give it to God. Every time you decide you, got, you need cigarettes, take that, put it in your pocket, wait till next Sunday, and give it to God. Now, I'll guarantee you one thing. Things will change in your life. Number one, you'll quit smoking. That's number one. Number two, you smell a whole lot better. Number three, the people around you will appreciate you more. And number four, God will bless you because you're taking the money that was going to Satan and giving it to him. Now, I'll challenge you Matter of fact, I'll put an offering plate right there. And anybody that does it this week, right there is the offering plate on Sunday morning. Do it right there. And then I want you to tell me how your life is changing. Because I'll guarantee you, it will change. It will change. That's something that uh, is important. You know, Larry told me this morning, he said, i got to quit smoking. Because if I don't quit smoking, they're not going to operate on me. How much do you love this man? Because you got to quit too. Because if you don't, you'll never quit. You'll never quit. You see, that's the difference. You take partnership. And it helps. Boy, look at the money. Ah, I, oh, oh, yeah. oh boy. <clears throat> Gotta be. He said angels will be it says the angels in heaven rejoice over one person to get saved. <laughs> they have thunder rolling out of heaven for that one. All right. But anyway, so let's go on a little bit. We're gonna close. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, 
and murdered his brother. And why did he murder? Because his works were evil and his brother's righteous. Do not marvel, my brother, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brother. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now, a lot of you that have been in the park over there know that my name over there is bandied around a little bit. Some people don't like me. Some people got mad because I kicked them out. Some people got mad because I, I wouldn't put up with all their shenanigans and stuff. And so I become their worst enemy, which is okay. I don't have no problem with that. I got broad shoulders. I can take But it's amazing. I've had them come back to me after they call me every name in the book and say, I'm sorry, can I come back? Why would they want to come back? They want to get food. They want to get shelter. They can say, I'm sorry for the food and the shelter. Now, and we'll close with this. Why not say you're sorry for your own soul? What's the most important thing you have in your life? It's your soul. And when you die, it's either going to go to one or two places. It's going to go to hell or it's going to go to heaven. Now, it may rest a while as a Christian because I don't personally believe that the minute you die as a Christian, you go to heaven. Because my Bible tells me otherwise. What it says in the New Testament and in the Old Testament too, it says, when dust shall sing, well, what's dust? Dust, they, dust don't sing. But our bodies return to dust, don't they? So our bodies resurrect. When the rapture of the church comes, our bodies, our souls, I mean, re resurrect. And our voices will come alive. Praising God. The sinner will moan. When they come before the judgment seat and God says, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I don't know you. And the gates of hell open, and you drop in, and you're lost forever. And it says, you'll know everything about you. The torments of hell. You'll be in hell with the worst people that ever walked on this earth. And you'll be in hell with some of the best people that never got their hearts right with God. But why go there if you don't have to? Why not change your ways? Why not say, Lord, forgive me? Man, there's nothing better than that. You know, there, we don't do some of these old songs anymore, but just this old song popped into my head. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You see, some of these old songs, we don't sing them anymore. Because we got too sophisticated. But I kind of like them sometimes. They reach the soul. They reach into the heart. And that's what we need to do. Is your heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood. It has to be made whole. And it changes your life. And it gives you something worth living for. It gives you a new direction in life. It gives you something inside that says, I'm worth it. I'm worth what Jesus done for me. Now what can I do for him? You know, you've heard of deathbed confessions, you know, deathbed conversions. Well, why wait until you're 80 or 90 to get your heart right with God when you're almost dead and you can't do anything? Why not get your heart right with God when you're younger? When you've got your whole life ahead of you? When you can, when you can let God mend the broken hearts? When you can let God do what needs to be done in your life? Why not let him do that? That's the key. That's the key to living for God. That's the key. So, what you do with God, what you do with Jesus, is really the important thing. If you want to change in your life, if you want to see God do something in your life, then you need to kneel in an altar of prayer and say, God, forgive me. That would be the best thing you ever did in your life. Because that changes your life. And it gives you something worth living for. You know, I've dealt with men in this, in this place for 35 years. 35 years. All different people, but guess what? All the same problem. 
all the same. As a friend. I said to a man yesterday, don't drink. Don't do it. Because it's not good for you. It's not good for you. Why would I say that? Because I love you. That's why. I didn't preach. Didn't have to. How much does people care for you? If you got one good friend in your life, you're blessed. If you have one good friend, a friend that you can talk to, a friend that you can confide in, a friend that you know will not go and tell the world what you did, you're a fortunate man. <coughs> I've been blessed in my life to have several good friends. And I appreciate that. But you know what? If every person in this building would get their heart right with God, you know what we could do? We could take Grand Junction and transform Grand Junction in a short period of time. If everybody would get their heart right with God. Now, the chances of that happening are pretty remote because Satan hangs on he grabs a hold and he says, I'm not going to let go. But Jesus is there and he says, there's no doorknob on that door to heaven. It's only through the saving grace of Jesus that you make heaven your home. So you have to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. And come into my life and change me and make me what you want me to be. And if you do that, and you mean it from the bottom of your heart. You watch the change that takes place in your life. Watch the change that takes place. It's amazing. It's amazing. Father, have we bow before you today. Asking you, Lord, to take your Holy Spirit and work in the hearts of the men and women that are here. Lord, for those that know you as Savior, strengthen them. Lift them up. Help them, Lord, to do the things that need to be done in their life to serve you better. For those, Lord, that don't know you, and their life is kind of a mess, we pray, Lord, that you would just take your Holy Spirit and convict them of their sin and bring them to you. And, Lord, help them to just say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner and I want to come home. I want, to, I want you to come into my life, Lord, and change me and make me what you want me to be. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will do that in the hearts of everybody that's in this building this morning. We thank you for your love and your kindness and your goodness. We thank you for answered prayer. And Lord, we pray for our nation, for the nation Israel. Pray, Lord, that you lift your people up, that you'll bring them to their knees before you, because the Bible says one day they'll bother to you. And Lord, then we know that time is growing really short. Lord, we pray that you will just be there and lift us up. Pray for our country, Lord. Pray for our leaders. Pray, Lord, that revival will sweep through our Senate and our House and the President's heart. And, Lord, that will change them. Change them for the better. And help them, Lord, not to put their own interests before the interests of the people in our country. And, Lord, we ask you to do that in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we ask you to be with us this week. Guide us in all that we do. Protect us. Put your hand upon us. Bless us. And Lord, supply the needs that everyone in this building has. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Be able to tear God. Going out the